Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy So So. In case you ain't know So, and welcome back to another dope episode of Sports with So So. Coming to you live, y'all. This week, the Heat stay red hot as they compete for the fourth spot in the East. The Panthers are on fire as they're the best team in the NHL. And we got UFC 299 in our own backyard. It's time to take a ride, y'all. Let's go. It's going to be a good show when you, when you break out the dance moves. Though. Yeah, right before. Well, I mean, when you nail it on the first go. Yeah, you got to you you celebrate that. about yourself. You got to celebrate that. Cheers, man. What's Whoa, going on, bro? What they do, my boy? What they do, man. Hey, good round yesterday, bro. I know uh, we were talking about it, but I got to say it on wax. Uh, good round yesterday. It was fun. It was a great time. Overdue. We hadn't played around. I don't think we had played around together this year so far. No, we had. We had. But this it, year? 2024? Yes. Yeah, bro. Right for my birthday. Oh. Come on, man. And then I think we played. Bro, this was probably like our third round. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe. Maybe. Um, but it was a good time. It was. It was a great time. A lot of good shots. A lot of, lot of good shots. A lot of bad ones. A lot of bad ones. <laughs> but uh, the weather held up for us, thankfully. Thank God, bro. And it was kind of weird, that weather, bro, because it was like um, overclass. And then, like, you know, when I when I woke up, I, first thing I did was go check the weather report, right? And it was like overcast all day. And I'm like, well, no, no rain until like 3, 4 o'clock. Maybe we can get it in. But, you know, Miami weather, dog, that shit can change in an instant. Yeah. So, yeah, lucky that it didn't rain and we got to finish. Yeah, you had the, the sun poking out and it just bought us enough time because in the afternoon it got wild. It got wild. They, like postponed the, the Cognizant Classic. Yeah, bro. Known as the Honda. And Johnny had some money on fucking Ricky. He couldn't come through, dog. Ricky no he saw Nikki. He couldn't come through, dog. But um, we, it was a good round, man. Uh, shout out to John. Shout out to P. Boy, oh man, he met us up there on the back. Yeah, we have five. Yeah, for like Ryan. Eight holes in the back. I love that. You know me. I Randos. love the big groups. Yeah. It's yeah, fun, no. man. It's fun, bro. And like I said, it's just, it's 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 always fun to play with different people that you haven't played with, right? Because it just shows you different things that you may have not known about your own golf game that other people are recognizing in and out of it, you know? So mm -hmm. it's always good to have more eyes on it, bro. Especially when you're looking for a ball. <laughs> Yo, we saw it. It's hey, this did one. Did you guys catch that one? <laughs> yeah. You know, you got 10 pairs of eyes out there, dog. You'll be able to find all those balls. Did we have any of those crazy ones yesterday? Nah, because everybody, because like, even the one, there was one that John like blasted. Them. Yeah, we remember? Like, we were like, yo, we got it. it. But you got to go around over here and well, like we drive it. all the way down. We got and it. And it was funny, on the whole coming back, somebody was over there hitting from the same spot. <laughs> That's we were like, right. John's been there, dog. Don't even sweat it. Don't even sweat it, my dog. Oh, man, that shit was fun. Uh, you know what else has been fun recently? Pizza mañana. Oh, I've been. Uh, We've been getting that pizza mañana. I've been. I've been staying away from the papayon. Yeah, yeah. The dog's not letting me get but it I too like, often. I, you know me. I like the sentiment, dog. I love the fact that the people can get their pizza. Feed the people. You know what I mean. Feed the people. Feed, feed the, the streets, people. dog. And feed your fans, right? Like they've been riding with you all season, like taking the the shit that you guys have produced early on in the season, and now we get to reap the rewards of of how the Heat are playing and, and more importantly, how Jimmy is playing, mm -hmm. right? And, and mm -hmm. we'll get to him in a little bit. But the, the, the fact that the Heat are, you know, 34 and 26, still seventh in the East, but they're only a game and a half behind that fourth spot, uh, which the Knicks are currently holding after their win this weekend. It just shows you that, man, sometimes these guys can flick the switch, but my worry is that, Maybe it can be turned back off, right? And there are times in games where we do have lows of offense and that shit can get a little bit worrying in that game. <clears throat> but ultimately, what we've seen is Jimmy being dominant and then the rest of the supporting cast actually showing up and, and being able to contribute in some form or fashion. But really, it's been Jimmy being dominant. And for the people who like, oh, yeah, this is the perfect time for Jimmy to be balling. Yeah, it's great. It's great, and yes, we needed it, but we could have really used this a month and a half ago, right, where we wouldn't be in this battle, and we would have really been able to take advantage of the different injuries that happened to, to our main opponents in the East. But ultimately, the fact that these guys are on a, you know, current 10-3 run in their last 13 games, um, they bounced back after losing to Denver, right? Tough game that they lost to Denver. They almost gave up 40, you know, 40 points in the first half, in the first quarter, gave up 36, but they bounced back against a tough, young Utah team who's going to run at you and score threes and, and make it difficult. But the Heat hung in there, and they showed their reserve. 
and they actually closed that game out by playing good defense. Winning 10 games is not easy. In 13 games, it's not easy. But the way that the Heat have done it has mostly been relying on defense and letting that create opportunities for our main guys, especially Jimmy. It's, it's our key to success, but back to it. How much can we just depend on Jimmy? When is somebody else going to take that next step to be a superstar? Jimmy is a superstar right now in today's NBA. Don't debate me. But in order for him to win a championship, we've already seen that Jimmy being the only superstar on this team is not going to work. Somebody needs to step up and continue to play at that high-ass level that Jimmy's been playing, man. Because <clears throat> the Knicks are hurt. They just lost Brunson. I don't know how long he's going to be out. Um, it looked bad. I don't know if you saw the injury. It I looked bad. Not. That's the first I'm hearing of it. Check it out. You go look at a picture. Um, we know that Philadelphia lost Embiid, right? And he's coming back towards the end of the season. Um, but still, it's going to take some time for a big man of his size to get back into the flow of actual NBA games, right? And, and when he comes back, how good can he be? Left and, knee contusion. Yeah. It, it, the injury looked bad. Look at look at that picture of him holding that shit, dog. Like he tried to get up and couldn't walk. Like uh, X rays are negative though. He'll be he'll be back for the playoffs. Mm, how at nowhere near a hundred percent. I mean, nobody's gonna be at a hundred percent. Well, he's gonna be at sixty percent, seventy percent at best, right? Which can't bode well for the Knicks. My point being is that we 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 still have an advantage that we can take over these teams, um, yeah. especially knowing that the hit Knicks won the season series against us. Uh, we're currently two up on Philadelphia. We got one more game with them, or I think two more games with them. Speaking of Philadelphia, what's up with Embiid? Well, like I said he, uh, earlier, he's he's coming back, right? And I think he's like a couple of weeks away, maybe three weeks away. He said himself that he's going to try to get games in before the regular season is over in order to get back to like that speed that I was talking about of, of game speed. Because it's one thing to practice. It's one thing to rehab. It's one thing to play pickup games and you know what I mean and all that. But it's another thing where you're competing against a guy who knows that you're hurt and is going to go after you. Just like in football, dog, like if, or in any sport. If, you, if your opponent knows as an athlete that you're injured, guess what? They're going an extra 10% or whatever they have in their tank because they know that they can take some type of advantage from that. Jimmy uh, Embiid is going to be on that type of struggle for Philadelphia when he comes back. But he is close to coming back. Orlando is the other team that's in front of us, but we own them. Right, we have the tiebreaker over them because we we already won the series against them this year. So I'm not really worried about Orlando. We need to take advantage of where Philadelphia and where the Knicks are at right now and just try to win as many games as possible in order to put themselves into that fourth seed. Because that's the only way that I can really see ourselves having a chance to win a championship. If we're stuck in that seventh, eighth spot, I don't care how good Jimmy is. It's just going to be really hard for us to win a championship. Well, what do you, so you're, do you think that a superstar needs to emerge from this heat roster? Absolutely. For us to prevail in, you know, our quest for the championship. And it doesn't have to be for the rest of the season, but when the playoffs come, either Bam, Hero, Rozier, Hawkins, any one of these guys, any one of those four guys that I mentioned are going to have to, significantly significantly raise their level of play in the playoffs for us to win a championship who do you think i'll give you an example just i'm about to cut yeah, you off but here's the it. example bam's been balling this year right sure all right bam's averaging 20 something points for us this year right yep in the playoffs bam needs to average 31 points specifically 31 it has to be above 30 okay that superstar shit he could average 30.1 because jimmy's gonna give us pretty much 30 points a game we know that. He's going to be in that 27, 28, 29 range for sure, right? Bam needs to be in that same range, 27, 28, 29, 30 range. If it's not him, it needs to be Tyler Hero. Only problem with that is Tyler Hero is going to take a lot of shots to get to 30. And the nights that he's on, whew, he's on, dog. That boy's going to be shooting 65% from the field, right? Including the three-point line, whatever he's shooting over there. But when he's off, it could be really bad. It would be an 8 of 29, an 8 of 22 day for him. Hero's the biggest question mark for me. You know that. For sure. He disappears come postseason. Mm. So he could, you know, he could in theory. We haven't really seen the, you know, what he could do for us in, in a deep run. So 
he could, in theory, emerge as, you know, the superstar that we've been waiting for, that six man of the year, you know, guy that, you know, really should have been a starter the whole time because he, he is that good. Um, I, I don't think Bam necessarily needs to get the 30 points in the playoffs. It'd be great. If we do that, if Bam is a 30-point average a, a game, mm -hmm. I think we dominate the playoffs. I think, you know, him and Jimmy both averaging 30, I think we're dominating the playoffs, honestly. But... I, I need I need him to do what he does, you know, play play his role, be a presence. You know, he's our biggest body and he's our biggest presence. True. Defensively, he's our biggest asset. We always talk about that on on this show, but we need we need the balance, right? We need the the, the role players to step it up and, and really do their job when <clears throat> called upon in those moments. Like I don't I, last week, I, you know, obviously I wasn't on the show, but right. A couple weeks ago, Vic. shout out to Vic for holding it down. Um, but a couple weeks ago, the Heat had that game where Jimmy was suspended and Jovic yes. and a couple of guys. And, and Thomas Bryan was out too. And the Heat still managed to pull out a dub. Yes. You know, and those were guys stepping up. Correct. And taking advantage of certain situations. So who dominated that game for the Heat? Bam did. Sure. <clears throat> and and that's why I say, like, it's not crazy for me to expect that of Bam in the playoffs. It's not. He's going to get the looks. He's going to get the opportunities. He just has to maximize his opportunity because of what you said. His defense is so good. His defense is so good that he doesn't have to give 110% to look good out there on defense, right? If he can get that extra 15% and throw it to the offensive side, then you can really push a guy who's averaging 21 points a game for us into that 26, 27, 28 type range and it's just capitalizing a, uh, more often because there's a lot of times we see bam he gets a little finicky and down in the post and does a little too much and doesn't go straight up with the ball right doesn't you know doesn't take the contact he's like you know just be more aggressive about that decision making and be more efficient you know when you're doing so yes and i think that he can be efficient but he just has to be aggressive and that that part is coming from the confidence knowing that you're going to have the opportunities to score more points and have more shots in your wheelhouse. Right. Right. Cause we've seen him have some really good games around the rim, <clears throat> right. Where he's scoring all types of back, back baskets against the uh, bigger opponents inside the paint. However he can, whether it's a flip or a little, you know, pump fake to a layup, whatever. And then in the fourth quarter, once those guys start to bite on that, he's pulling out the jumper and he's knocking down the jumper comfortable jumper he's gonna miss a couple he's gonna miss a couple yeah, but that's the thing but he's taking them with confidence we need him to be like chris bosh automatic yeah. from that from that yeah. 15 16 foot you know that they're gonna they're not gonna put a hand up or defend it because they're they're worried and they should they should be respecting you and, and what you can do in the lane but that easy little just pull up shot man and he has it there's nights that he has, he it, has but then it there's man. nights there's nights that he goes cold sometimes, and I feel like it's when the whole offense is off. True. I don't know if that's just a coincidence. No, no. Or, no, or no. What, but it's like he, but he, has he can't the shot. buy a bucket, you know? But he has the shot in the bag. Yeah. Right? And I think that if he goes into the playoffs confident in that shot and takes that shot more often, there's no doubt that he can average close to 30 for the playoffs. And I tell you what, Joel, to tie it back to the beginning, right, with Jimmy Butler and how he's been a driving force for this winning streak. Um, he's going to need this. He's going to need to be the sidekick to Jimmy dog. He's going to need to be the sidekick just to, just to kind of alleviate the pressure of when hero comes back of not overperforming or feeling extra pressure to perform. Nah, come in and do your thing, homie. Don't pressure me and me and Jimmy got the scoring. You throw in whatever you can. <clears throat> Because right now in this in this streak, in his last 10 games, Jimmy's average averaging 23.8 points per game, seven rebounds point per game, seven seven point three assists per game, two point five steals per game, Jeez. while shooting fifty four percent from the field, fifty three percent from three, and seventy eight percent from the free throw line. That's impressive, bro. That's weight that's shit. A, that's crazy. <laughs> that's weight shit. <laughs> that's prime weight shit, right? So it's not surprising that Jimmy can do these things. It's not. Because no. we know that he that he is this type of player. Absolutely. Dog. You know what I mean? But in order for him to be an even better level, a higher efficient level himself, he's going to need somebody next to him, taking that pressure off of him, balling out every night consistently. I hope that Bam can continue to play as good as he's been playing the rest of the season. There's less than 20 games left, I'm with dog. You. 
You know what I mean? I hope that band can continue to do that because that's just going to show, that's just going to give Jimmy more confidence to be like, yeah, I can keep giving him more responsibility and he's going to be able to perform. And then if, if, if we go into the playoffs with that in mind, there's no doubt that we can reach the fourth seed, fifth seed, and end the season like that, right, by playing well, and then take that momentum into the postseason where people are, are going to be afraid of us because we're going to be playing well. But it has to happen with Bam playing at an even higher level, right? Because we know that it'll be hard to expect that from Jimmy, uh, from Tyler, excuse me, when he comes back. It'll be hard to put that on Hawkes, right, because he's a rookie, and be like, yo, go out there and be a superstar, right? We need him to just go down low and bang for boards. He, he's going to keep doing his thing. And then it'll be hard to expect that of Terry Rozier also, right? Mm, to be is like, it, though? Is yeah, it that yeah. hard to expect it of him? Yeah, to go to... This from, is a seasoned veteran. Yes, but to about. go from 20 points per game to like a, a seven-point increase in the playoffs, it may be hard because he's still getting adjusted. But what he can do is what he's been doing since he got back from the injury. He hasn't really had an offensive output game but he's been playing really well on defense. Yeah, he's definitely really well. going to be a locked on defender for us. But, you know, obviously Bam is the guy that I think we both, there's a consensus, he's the guy that takes our team to the promised land. For sure. You know, we know Jimmy, what we're going to get, and he needs something, you know, that one, two. He has to be the two. Uh, hero, you know, we know what we get in the playoffs, unfortunately, with him. Hopefully it's different. If it is, that's just more money in the bank for us. Yeah. But aside from those two guys, Bam and Hero, you know, the, the, that was a person, you know, was Rogier. You know, that's the reason we went after that a, a guy like that. Is that's a guy that I think can take over in the fourth quarter. If somebody if they're double teaming Jimmy or they're really game planning against Bam, you know, that's right. the guy right there that they can run something around and he's gonna make the big play, the big, you know, make the big basket. Cause he's been there before, bro. And 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 he not only been there before, but he's excelled there before right and we, it's just been short where we haven't gotten the championship luckily for us we have a good you know set of games in in this next week that we can really take advantage of we're playing home um against detroit they're one of the worst teams in the nba tonight when you're listening to this you know what i mean they're they're they've only won nine games this season then we're going to be on the road at dallas that's right? an interesting one there. that's going to be a tough game but look they're, they're kind of struggling figuring out their identity in the tough tough west right they're competing with phoenix and golden state to be out of that seventh eighth ninth position so this is a team that yeah they they're they're fighting for stuff, but they're not necessarily a great team, sure. right? They're not a great team. And then we have OKC, who's really surprised. Pretty good team. A lot of people this year, Young and that's team. a good team. That, number one in the West, like, you you got... That's they're like, one? Yeah, dog. Oh, I didn't even know they were one. half a game against uh, above Minnesota and, and Denver. Oh, but, okay. But the fact but yeah, that they're, they're... they're there. The fact that they're hanging with those two teams shows you how good this OKC team is. Yeah, they're so good. it's a good measuring stick to be like, how good are we against the best of the best in the West? Right, we lost a tough game against Denver, close. We lost a tough game against uh, the Celtics, which was also close, and then we lost uh, another game. <clears throat> Who's that third game against? I have it here, I think. Uh, the Clippers, another team that has been playing really tough. well in the West, right? So, yeah, all three winnable games, contenders, and then another game Sunday before we record against Washington, another team that's not necessarily playing for anything this year. So, good, good stretch of games for the Heat. Coming up, man. Gotta go three and one there at least. At least go four and zero, dog. Show me something. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be really like peace, uh, peace dog, all week. Be, not only that, but I think that just shows everybody that the Heat are really on point right now. Really on point. Um, let's jump on over to the ice, bro. This is the team that this is the team dog. talking about right now. This is the hottest team in the NHL and pretty much in South Florida. Hottest dog. team in South Florida right now for sure. And, and and you know what? When when Vic and I spoke about the Panthers, dog, like you know, he made me realize how much work the Panthers had been putting in for like the last six seven years, low key in the franchise, making good hires for assistants and and putting people in positions in in player development, like. These guys have found the right way to build this team, and everything is clicking for these guys, dog. These guys went and got fucking Sam. They they have a guy in Sam Reinhardt, dog, who A, wasn't really nationally known, right, before he got here. Not Definitely wasn't considered one of the best players in the NHL. And this guy's tied for second in goals, dog, with 42 goals. This yeah. year. Come on, dog. Come on, dog. Like, how do the Panthers find these guys? They and went and got a Kachuk. They have Big Bob here. You know what I mean? Barkov, guys that they've brought in, dog, and built this team, dog. It's wild. 
41 and 16 right now. 41, 16, and 4. First in the Eastern Conference. Yo. Yo. 14 and 2 in their last 16 games. Joel. Including a four. Name game me shoot. another franchise, regardless of the sport, regardless of the sport, where every move that they've made, whether it's bringing up a goalie, sending a player out, completing a trade. Name me another team that's hit so many back to back to back to back to back to back hits like the Panthers have. I can't I can't tell you in, in hockey because my uh, my Panther, my my <laughs> Your knowledge, knowledge stops right there at the Panthers for the most part. So who knows? There may be other, you know, teams, super teams or whatever you want to call them that have been built uh, over time, dynasty teams or whatever. Um, but all I know is that. The process is is completely like working right now because we've seen a couple years of success and we haven't seen necessarily regression. We we have in, at times, but we've seen more progression than anything for a guy like Sam Reinhardt to be second in the NHL right now and goal scored. Come on, it's unreal. Come on, nothing against Sam Reinhardt. You no, know, he's a phenomenal player. There's a reason he's doing that. But a couple years ago, we never thought that that would be the case. You know, you would look at other guys on the team and go, "That's the guy right there." That you know, this guy would be the four. You know. But now we're we're using guys differently, you know, guys that we've had for a while that you know fit this team, fit this culture, and now they're thriving, you know, uh, in 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 different positions of you know opportunity. And the way that he's doing it, man, like just really contributing. This guy has thirty assists on the season too, so it's not just hey, this is the only production that I'm giving you. No, man, the Panthers have so many guys that are doing the on both sides, right? Like, hey, if, if I'm an offensive player, I'm scoring and I'm assisting. Hey, I play defense, I'm I'm killing a lot of penalties and I'm uh, hooking up assist or getting two uh, a second assist on some of our power plays and whatnot. This team, dog, like, the way that it's been built, I, I struggle having to find an equal comparison with teams down here that we've seen recently because the Panthers have done it better than any other franchise down here, dog. They've done it better than any other franchise, dog. They went out and got big name players, right? They went and got Kachuk. They went well, and even before Kachuk, even it all before, before Kachuk, that. Bobrovsky, I think, would be the was, big, the was big a piece, huge the piece that he piece. came. Huge piece, dog. Look at how he's playing. Balling, Joel Balling, dog. And then again, like every big move that you made, like the Kachuk trade was a big one because we got rid of a really good freaking player for the Panthers, dog. And, the er and everybody was like, what the hell is going on here? And all Matthew Kachuk has been quietly, quietly been the second best player, third best player on this team. So if that guy who's your most talented player is your third best player, that means the other two guys that are working him, those guys are far, far exceeding their their reasonable, you know, stats and, and what you can have expectations for, as far as, you know what I mean? Like the way this team is, I don't want to say overachieving, but just clicking on all cylinders, right? They're achieving. They're, they're doing achieving. What, they're doing what the, everybody thought this team would mm. be do, would be capable of doing. I mean, this is, a, for the most part, a team that won the President's uh, Cup. Cup Award a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, we he didn't have the best performance in the playoffs, but then you saw the resiliency last year, in last year's postseason, you know, run to the Stanley Cup final. So they've been slowly pulling it together, and it just it, it's clicking right now, bro. They're the hottest team in the NHL right now, by hottest. far. Hottest. I, think, I think we definitely now have surpassed Boston, you know, and people are like, oh, shit, you know. It, the the Panthers are getting primed for a run, a deep run. No, they're scared of the Panthers right now because I th I just think that everybody in the NHL has been put on notice that the Panthers are a real threat. And like I said, when Kachuk is your third leading scorer behind Verhage and Reinhardt, you know that you have problems facing this Panthers team. They just shut out Detroit. That was um, Big Bob's 42nd career shutout. 4-0? Yeah. 4-0, Doug. And in Detroit, so like hockey town, the, hockey town, like a tough team. And this team is going out there and whooping on these guys. They came back, right. To keep the streak alive at home, um, by beating Montreal and won the shootout four to three. That's a six game home winning streak that these guys going on. They're seven and one in their last eight games at home. Mm. So they're dominating on the road, right? Cause they had that crazy win streak going on last week. Right. And so they lost it. And now they're, they're continuing to dominate at, at, at at home when they're whenever they're playing whoever the best of the best or the worst of the worst 
with 21 games left in the season against, including tonight's game against the Rangers, right? You guys don't know the results later. Which is a tough one. I wish we were talking about this after the fact. Yeah, I know, man. They're they're pretty close in the standings, that's, and that's a good team. That's a good this team a, and, and a good a rival. Game, and we're playing them on the road. Yeah, you know, and a good rival. You know what I mean? Shout out to my dog, DJ Monopoly out there, man. Uh, he's the DJ for the, for the Rangers and the Knicks. Um... I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I really feel strongly about this Panthers team because this is the team right now, like I said, is clicking on all cylinders. Every single move has worked out for them. These guys are playing together. They are not focused on being known or being the best. They're just focused on winning. And I think that they have the right objective in mind, which is Stanley Cup or bust. It is. It right? absolutely is. Yeah, but it's one thing to have it, Joel, and another thing to play like it, right? Because to play like it, dog, it's a lot of hard work. Right? You're playing games when you're extremely hurt. Back to backs or three games in four days. Right? Like, that's a lot of hard work, dog. And you have to get up and say, I'm going to put in maximum effort, even though I don't have it. Even though my left leg is numb, I'm going to go out there and play 40 minutes on the ice out of this possible 55 minutes. Like, that shit is tough, dog. And we know that hockey players are tough, but. To bring it night in, night out against the best of the best, dog, and, and really keep streaks alive, right? Bounce back from a loss and go on another seven, eight game winning streak. Like, that's not easy, dog. I and the Panthers give, are doing it this season. You know, you got to give credit, obviously, to all the players we talked about, but you got to give credit to Coach Maurice. <sighs> what a I job, mean, dog. You know, that's a guy that's, you know, he stepped in, he had big shoes to fill. Yeah. You know, and, uh, he figured it out last year and then started off kind of, you know, they started off kind of cold and uh, credit to him again. And he's starting to figure it out right at the right time, man. It's it's not an easy job with that many egos in the locker room and, you know, that much talent, you know, to keep everything under control and keep everybody with their eyes on the prize. And keep the expectations high, right? Because he came in with high expectations and kept them up there, if not put them higher. 100%. Right? Yeah, I think he's definitely meeting them. Yeah, exceeding man, them. exceeding them. I, I would agree with you there, bro, because, uh, again, to do that consistently over and over again with a team that is has a really good foundation and maybe you're changing pieces at the top to fit whatever your needs are to continue to keep winning, not easy, man. And the way that him and, and Zito have done it, bro, those guys are really kicking ass, bro, kicking ass. Um, like we said, they're playing tonight in the Rangers. That's a tough game. Rangers well, are still lit in their division. This is over, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I might just put it on my phone right now. Uh, <laughs> and then they got the back-to-back, -back, right? Playing New Jersey, right? Taking advantage of that New York trip, right? So tough games, back-to-back -back there. Um, New Jersey isn't necessarily great this season, but still, you know, the fact that you're playing back-to-back -back nights, that's tough on any hockey team. And then Thursday, they'll be back at it at home against Philadelphia and then at home against against Calgary again on Sunday or Saturday excuse me before um hitting the road again just keep rolling baby hey this is like I don't even want to say like oh they gotta get a win shoot. like nah they just keep doing what they're doing they're, I feel like they're waiting for the playoffs to start yeah 21 games left and those guys are they're salivating stay, dog. they're just trying to stay warm you know what I mean they look like Rocky when he's getting ready to fight in Russia and he's just in the barn and they're just, he's just focused and lifting weights. That's what he's doing, dog. That's, uh, that's, that's, all, that's they're what they're playing with their food. That's it, dog. That's it. Vamos gatos, man. Those yeah. guys are killing it, we dog. We got a whoop on the Rangers right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We got to touch on this one because this is in our backyard. An exciting UFC 299 card is on deck this weekend, Saturday. It's going down the pay per view event. Um, headlined by. Sean Sugar O'Malley versus Sugar Sean Marley Cheeto Vera. Second time they fight. Um, the first time they fought, actually, you know, um, didn't, this was didn't Vera win? Yes, but they were fighting in the Apex Center. So this was like during those weird COVID times where the Apex Center was was completely empty. Yeah. Um, and in that first round, Sugar really rolled his ankle, right? While he was throwing punches coming forward at, at Cheeto, he stepped wrong and rolled his ankle. And, like, you could tell that he totally messed it up. I think he had, like, a hurt ligament or anything like that. Like, he tore a ligament. And it was bad. He went straight down to the canvas. Boom. And when he went down, Cheeto took advantage. You know what I'm saying? He jumped on top of him, throw, him. Throwing, so, throwing some balls, hit him with an elbow. And right there, the ref stopped it. And as soon as the ref stopped it, like, you know, Sugar, you could tell that he was just in so much pain, dog, that he didn't even, like, dispute the stoppage. You know, he was just grabbing his ankle and, like, you know, calling the, the doctors and shit. And you could tell that he was really messed up. The funny thing about it is that recently, in the last two weeks or week and a half, uh, he took to X, a.k.a. 
uh, Twitter, He's just still right? Twitter, bro. And he was like, "Oh, I'm nine and oh, or whatever, ten and oh." Yeah, I saw and, that. And Twitter <laughs> verified, checked him or whatever. That was funny. hey, the you're wrong. That, the fact that it was Twitter that like yeah, fact dude, him. yeah, dude. But I got him right because like that shouldn't count like an L, even though it is. Why it, not? It should it, because dog. Like, well, yeah, you got hurt, you, you know, lost. and that's part of it, dog. That's like, part of it. You lost. It's a it's like a professional bout. You lost. Yeah, for sure. It for definitely sure. Definitely count. But but what's crazy is that Cheeto really didn't use that momentum to jump ahead of him in the in the bantamweight division, right? Like he got up to face Peter Yan, who was a champion at the time, I think, and then he lost that fight, and then ended up winning his next fight, but losing the next fight, and then you know he lost to Corey Sanhagen, who's a guy I think should be ranked number one or number two, right? But he overstepped all these guys. He overstepped Marab, which is uh, Sterling's partner, uh, training partner, um, the dude with the funny hat. Um, and he's ranked number two right now. You know, Aljamain Sterling was a champion. He's moving up in weight, right? Because bantamweight division is too, too hard for him to cut down to. But there's a lot of guys there in that division that feel like Cheeto didn't really deserve this shot. And he's only getting it because of the beef, right? But I think the most dangerous fight is for Sugar because Sugar's going to go out there with the head thought of like, oh, I got to finish this dude to show everybody that first time was a fluke. And that can be dangerous, dog, because a guy like Cheeto, dog, he has a tough tin. He's been knocked out and he knows how to knock out people. So uh, he's not he's been in wars and he's not afraid to throw it. So he, he can wait on on Sugar to give him that small little opening and then boom, pounce on him. Um, but Sugar is one of the most talented strikers in bantamweight history dog like this dude is sick with the hands so this fight is going to be very interesting if i had to pick one i think i would go with o'malley right i'm sure he's the betting favorite right now as a champ um but i would go with sugar because of his control right like let's say neither one of them gets knocked out right if you're talking about the fight stands up the whole time or a majority of the fight then sugar has the advantage because he's longer he's going to be able to piece him up from the outside so that's where i give him the edge i don't know about you no i agree i think i i think that uh, he's also kind of set up as the poster boy of the UFC too. Yeah. So I kind of feel like this is a, you know, a fight that they want him to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, that's why I'm like, he has to be very careful stepping into this fight, you know, be, being the headliner sometimes can work against you. Right. Because sometimes you think you're that good or you have this in the bag and maybe you don't, maybe something happens. But he's looked pretty composed in his last few For fights. Sure. Like he's not his first rodeo. He's For been sure. in a couple of big cards already. For sure. Maybe not the headliner, but He's already been, you know, in a position where he, a lot of eyeballs are on him. So, right. I think he'll be fine. But, yeah, Cheeto is still, a, you know, he's still dangerous. So, you got to give him his respect. He can definitely knock Sean's ass out in the first round, something we've never seen. Come on. Anybody can get touched, especially Anybody. with the eight, eight, eight ounce that. gloves, man. And then the co main event um, is Dustin Poirier, man. And that fight is going to be very, very interesting because he's fighting um, St. Dennis. And this dude, um, you know, at first the fight almost didn't happen, but no, I w- wanted to sign the contract. Dustin didn't really sign it. He said he didn't get the paperwork and then they had changed some, you know, of the wording on the contract. It almost didn't happen, but they finally got the signatures on paper. So the fight's going down in that um, lightweight division. And I think that Dustin, you know, I feel like he's close, man. He's 35 years old, right? I feel like he's getting close to that end of the career and and he's probably just working it in order to get himself closer to becoming a title contender i don't know if he has it in him to make it there because for me for me for me and this is only me i'm not an mma expert but in order to make it as a contender dog you have to be riding some type of four fight win streak where you knocked out three dudes or you knocked out two dudes and then you finish the guy in like a inside two minutes or something like like yeah, impressive you results you have dominant Right. Because if not, then then I feel like you're you're just going to be, you know, for lack of a better term, you might end up being food for somebody else who's a real killer in that division or at the top sure. of his game. Right. Absolutely. And when we're talking about the the names in that division, you're talking about Makachev, you're talking about uh, Charles Oliveira, Gaethje, you know, like Poirier's up there. The Rouge is up there. Like there's a lot of guys in that in that lightweight division that are real killers. And I think that, you know, Dustin can either etch his name in stone to be like yo i'm a real deal threat here and i'm gonna be the guy who comes out on top before i retire in this division or he gives pace to this new guy who's really been fucking fighting a uh you know a hell of a win streak you know this guy is five and oh in his last five fights uh, <clears throat> we talked about having impressive fights in his last four fights he has three ko's one submission like all within two rounds so again impressive fights over and over and over again 
Now he gets a chance to go against a better opponent. Let's see if he can put a veteran out, you know what I mean? And and, and really knock that fight out. Um, this this third fight is the most interesting in the fight for me. It's that Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page. MVP in the UFC. Yes, sir, man. How old is MVP now? He's 36. Yeah, dude. But Kevin Holland's 31. So Yeah, I, but I feel like MVP is like five, six years overdue for the like UFC. For bro. sure. For sure he is. You know what I mean? Because he was just at the top of his game for so long and he in the world to weight division where it had so many competition for him in the UFC and he just never was able to make it over. Um but he's here now, you know what I mean? He's still in his prime, he's still a very dangerous fighter. And going up against Kevin Holland, a guy who's always game, right? And and willing to show up and put on a good, exciting fight for the fans. I think that's a great introduction fight because we're going to see if MVP can really hang with the guys of the UFC. Like, everybody knows that the UFC has the best of the best of the best, dog. Like, there are maybe three guys in the world, five, four to five guys in the world that aren't the best of the best and not fighting in the UFC, right? Like, that, those are just rare. And Engano just left, and he's one of them, right? Um, but yeah, this dude, man, Kevin Holland, he's a real tough dude. And I, and I think that this is a good test for, for Michael Venom Page to come out here and show the UFC what they've been missing, right? And hopefully he can get a title shot within those, that next 14 months, right? Where he can keep fighting quicker and, and finding results and finding his way to get into, into the top 10 in the, um, excuse me, Walter Vick division, man. Pretty good car, bro. Definitely got to check this one out. Yeah, bro. It's worth it. Plus in the backyard. Yeah. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got some honorable mentions here. Martin Spring Training going well. Um, six low actually pitched. It was incredible. <laughs> somebody it's saw a, him. It's a unicorn. Yeah, somebody saw him though pitching. It was great, and they actually reported on it. It's like big he fun. has a stat. Um, I don't believe it till I see it. Yeah, that's I'll, that's just my. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> no, the, but the team is look good, right? The, I feel like the pitching's coming along, and and there have been good things being said, or at least posted about it on in spring training but you know it's just spring training uh, there's not a lot that happens there where you're like ah this guy's dominant you know what i mean <clears throat> but they did make a move they got shortstop tim anderson how you feel about that uh i like it you know and, I, and i'll tell you why because a he's a defensive minded player that's always a plus right for the infield that's always a plus maybe you don't bring it for the bat but i need you to not allow runs here and, and make double plays right that's why i think he's gonna help the the marlins the most um, but he also brings toughness, dog. Yeah, he got knocked out, but guess what? It takes a fucking real man to go up to somebody else and fight somebody and take that shit on the chin and get back up and continue to do your thing and be about the same business. So um, I think this team needs a little bit of toughness, right? I think they we were a little bit too carefree last year and the vibes were good, um, but teams also need to know that they can't mess with us, right? And that we have this type of toughness in our team to say, we're not going to let teams try to bully us. We're going to be the tough guys out there. We're going to be the team that shows that we're not scared of anybody. And I think that he's going to help with that um, because this team is young, right? It doesn't really necessarily have quote unquote hardcore leaders. So we'll see how it, go, how it goes. But the 28th, that's Marlins opening day. March 28th. I think so. Yes, okay. I believe so. Right. Yep. That's a Thursday at 4 p.m. start. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? We're going to be out there. Hey. Definitely going to be out there. I don't uh, know if you're being in town, though. I should be in town. Or back. Opening day. Yeah, we'll yeah. make it happen. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. It's always a good time to go to the, For the sure. park. For sure. We'll, we'll, we'll talk details. Um, also, Dolphins, you know, um, OnlyFans is going to be doing an off-season recap pretty soon and uh, look ahead to the draft. Um, but we know that they're making some moves. I wanted to get your thoughts on how you feel about it. You know, we got Xavier Howard going to be cut pretty soon um, to save some salary cap money, which is very much needed. Um Today it came out that the Dolphins are definitely not franchise tagging Christian Wilkins. Um, so he's pretty much going to be a free agent March 11th. Um, they're still working on Tua's extension. Start wherever you want. I, f I, I saw all that coming. I think we saw that coming. Yes. You know, as far as Xavier Howard, you know, the writing was on the wall already when we didn't give him a long-term deal. Yeah. Cornerbacks, especially those, you know, growing, you know, getting older, are, are less prone to pro probably get that big deal lesser of Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we saw that already happening. Um, and then after a season like the last two that he's had where we've kind of seen a decline a little bit in his play, injuries. not so much against him, but just his injuries and his age is kind of showing. So it is what it is. I'm curious to see who the man is that steps up or who we go out and get. Mm. It ain't like Apple. And no. It ain't. Cam Smith. Uh, it's nobody here right now. A, a couple other guys that we have, yeah, on the team. I didn't want to call out anybody in particular, but 
you know, besides um, besides him. But yeah, I, I'm curious to see what we do to fill that void. And then with Wilkins, we saw that too. That's not anything new. You know, we we saw that they couldn't reach an agreement before the end of the se- or before the start of the season last year. Uh, where he wanted north of $100 million, you know, whatever he wants, 120 <laughs> over four years or five years or whatever it is. Yeah, it's a lot of money. You know, he wants a long-term big contract, and um, the Dolphins weren't willing to give him that. They wanted to give him more of, along the lines of what they gave Zach Sealer, right. which is like 98 over five, six years or something like that. Right. Um, Wilkins didn't want that. Deservedly so. I understand that. You had a career season. You're younger. You know, you have a, you know, you have a lot to, to offer a team. Um, especially when you bring to the locker room and everything, go get your bag, bro. I get it. We're not in a position right now where we can afford to give you that bag, but if you can go get that bag somewhere else, then so be it, you know? Happening. And then Tua's extension, I don't know. There's a lot to, you know, uh, do we extend them right now? Is the best? Is that the best financial situation that we can put ourselves in by giving him, a, you know, a, a two, three-year extension or I don't know how long we'd be able to extend them for versus writing out one more year of his contract, see how he continues to do and progress, and then potentially franchise tag him the following year, which at that point you're going to have to fork over like 40 to $50 million the way the market is right now yeah. for that one year. So, you know, do you want to go that route and just keep kind of keep playing the, you know, let's see where this goes game? Or do you want to lock yourself into a long term deal with Tua right now after this season? You know, I think uh, this is the least optimistic I've been in my Tua fandom. Wow. You know, is because wow. of the fact that we got to see a healthy Tua, a Tua that got to play every game, a Tua that as the season went on when he should have got better. He did not He regressed. And, you know, that's something that worries me. So it's all dependent, I think, on next year. I don't know For necessarily sure. if we want to extend him right now. I think that a lot of that has to do with how we re, re-sign and extend Tyreek Hill, right? Because that's going to add, like, I think what will ultimately end up being the final salary cap number that we have to work with, right? Um, as far as, as Xavier goes, for me, um, I'm going to agree with you. I, we saw the decline in play. But when he did play, he was good. But yeah, there were times where he got burned for shit that he shouldn't have gotten burned sure. for. And unfortunately, the the injuries started to pile up way too much. And it, and it started to become a detriment to the team, right? Which even is now, right now, right? The fact that we could only cut him and we can't even trade him for like a fourth or a fifth because he's hurt, wouldn't pass a physical, right? Um, shows you where we're at with Xavier Howard. Um, with Wilkins, I'm, I'm with you, bro. Like we talked about it yesterday while we were golfing or on, on Sunday, but go get your bag, dog. Like go get your bag, you know? And, and Omar Kelly today was talking about on the Joe Rose show that, you know, maybe by signing him, you, you kind of hurt yourself more long-term as opposed to go and paying a mercenary for two, three years where it hurts you less, you know, down the road, but you, you at least get to control it in those first two, three years. Right. Um, which is a, a, a more accepting hit as far as the salary cap goes and even throwing mo- guaranteed money out there, right? Um, and then with Tua, man, like, I'm in a wait-and-see approach because I, on, I'm on both sides of, of, the, of the coin with this. Like, it makes sense to extend him because if he goes out there and balls out next year, guess what? He has every right to say, fuck you, pay me. Price goes up. Super up. Super up, right? Even with the salary cap going up. That means you're going to have to pay him even more. Um, and then on the flip side, if you do extend him and, you, and he doesn't play well, he's here. And now we got to figure out what we got to do. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't think we're in a, in a win-win position. I definitely think we're in a win-lose position on how that plays out, right? What's the money? What's the years? How does it work out? <clears throat> That's going to be interesting to see, man. Um, but, yeah, we're going to re- recap the entire question, offseason. Question Talk to for me. you. Sorry, I know we're no, no, going go ahead. more on OnlyFans. Make sure to tune in. Yes. Um, but subscribe. There are channel. rumors of a certain out of former Alabama running back and current brick shithouse <laughs> coming to play for the Dolphins in Derrick Henry. Um he's done with the Titans. He's looking for the next step. I don't think it's here, bro. Because I think that if if we're being realistic, if we're being realistic, would he help? Absolutely. Absolutely. But then we have to change the entire offense. Do we? Yes. He's going to need touches, dog. Derrick Henry is only effective when he has... I'm not going to say only effective. I should take that back. But he's most effective when he has that 25 to 26 carry a game. None of our running backs got that this year, including the rookie who was fucking balling out and leading the NFL. 
at the time. Yeah, but I don't think necessarily. I, I'm just we saying need that Derrick Henry to have a 200 yard rushing game. No, so if we need a hard nose first down, Derrick Henry. Yeah, I get that. But, for but, that. But, if we need, for first and goal. I feel pretty confident giving it to Derrick 100%. Henry, even if he has 15, 20 touches a game. Yeah, Joel, but what I'm saying is, like, that's most effective, and you're looking to have that in the third, fourth quarter. He can't have his 12th touch in the third, fourth quarter. That's not going to work for Derrick Henry, Doc. No way, because he's going to want to go somewhere where he gets those 20, 20 to 26 touches a game. Doc. I think he wants to go somewhere to win a Super Bowl. Yeah, I think so, too. But there's other places where he can go and help. He can go play in Baltimore right now and help those guys out. A lot, right? A lot. Because I think that that's what Baltimore needed. They didn't run the ball. But if they had Derrick Henry... Every time a running back touches the field, they get hurt. But they pretty much have two running backs back there and and two badass running backs, if I say so myself, in Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. So, but yeah, would he help? Yes. But like I said, my main concern in bringing in a guy like Derrick Henry is, A, what do we pay him, right? And B, how do we use him? Are we really going to turn into a run first, second type team? With Tyreek Hill there, making all that money on the outside, saying, throw me the ball because I almost got 2,000 yards last season. I don't know. I don't know. Something to consider. Something to consider. Something to consider. We'll get more into it. We'll get into it. Uh, Let's touch real quick on Mundo Boxing. Shout out to Mundo Boxing. Shout out to Lester. Shout out to Jorge. Um, Rumble Rodeo was a success, in my opinion, man. It it had some really good fights. Um, Not so, some were whatever. But we got some see some real good talent out there, including our boy on the show, um, Lorenzo Medina, the giant killer. Shout out to him. Another first round knockout, even though he had a little bit of extra fireworks in the ring afterwards, right? When I think, bro, I, I think that was the fastest I ever saw a ring get filled with non-boxing people in my life, dog, <laughs> for sure. Because it went from like they got, eight people in the ring to forty-eight people in they the got ring. Wow, for a second there, but. Uh... We were good. You know, we were watching from a distance. Uh, yeah. It was good for the show. It didn't really get out of hand or no, anything. No, You know, it was just a little promotional tactic, you know. Yeah. But uh, it was good. It was a good night all around. I thought the venue was dope. You know, the way that they did it for, for the fights and right? stuff like that. I thought it was a real comfortable setup. We were comfortable. The barbecue. Again, shout out to Lester and, and everybody that helped out with that. How good was that barbecue? Barbecue was banging. Banging. Um, that line was long the whole night. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a good one. Make sure to go check out the, the interviews on uh, on the Instagram page. Those yeah, good interviews. Yeah, man, we had the interview with uh, Manny Correa, Sweet Dreams, uh, Rafael the Nigerian Nightmare, Akbajuri. Um, he had a great fight. That uh, was a really good, really one. good that fight. Heavyweights, right? Daniel Bailey was in a war. Shout out to ded- dedication. Um, that that dude was really yeah. in a war with with Anika Kid, and went of like course, four or five rounds. I think. Yeah, man, and again, all of them were a war. Went all out every single round until the very end, where he was able to finish his opponent. And then, of course, Lorenzo, man, um, showing why he's a problem in the heavyweight division, dog. Like. You know, I was telling a, a guy there, an older Cuban guy who was there watching the fight as I'm taking my notes, um, watching Lorenzo fight. And he's like, coño, como se mueve? And I'm like, bro, I've never seen a guy who is a heavyweight fighter move that fast. Not forward. There have been plenty of guys who move fast forward. That's no problem. And they can throw a quick job. But side to side, where he goes like that and you don't know what hand he's going to hit you with or what type of punch. Yeah, he, this kid has something special. So right, hopefully, he's 19, bro. Yeah, he's 19 years old, man, with that type of power and speed, dog. It's crazy. Wild. It's crazy. Um, So shout out yeah. to all those Kid guys. Has a bright future. And shout out to the promotion, man. And um, BKFC Fight Night coming up soon, bro. Two weeks from now, uh, March 15th, going down at Vivo Dolphin Mall. And, of course, Sports with Soso is going to be in the building uh, reporting live. And we got interviews coming up within the next week, man. We got H- HD, Howard Davis, the main event nice. coming up. Um, A couple of the other co-main events and another prospects that are earning their fight way into bkfc man so it's gonna be dope it's gonna be dope looking forward to that but the only way you get that is by subscribing to the youtube channel like comment subscribe and put the notifications on because that's how you get notified when we drop hot fire because nobody else in miami is doing this dog nobody so you gotta tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend to tell everybody that they they did to go right now and make sure they're following us on all social media and until next time Peace.